Police tell CBS News they are responding to reports of an active shooter at a supermarket in Boulder, Colorado. Well, right now we are seeing more and more resources uh, show up to the scene. We've seen a number of officers from Denver and different metro area departments. There's also countless uh, cruisers and SWAT members from Boulder here. It's still a quite active scene. I got the call from my daughter that my grandchildren and my son-in-law were walked into the pharmacy for him to get a COVID-19 shot. And the shooter came in, shot the woman in front of them. They hid, ran upstairs or hiding in a coat closet for the last hour. I think uh, we're still kind of in shock that uh, it even happened. When we had gotten out of the store, there were people laying in the street. Um, I, I tried to run for him, and uh, my son pulled me back and said that we had to get away. And uh, so I just tried to focus on my son. They talk about the frantic moment that this happened right around 2.30. Uh, one employee was walking out just as the shooter was walking in. And he says he saw out of the corner of his eye a flash and heard a bang and just started running. So I was I was just checking out at the at the self-checkout on the, I think the south side of the store and all of a sudden I started hearing shots and, and glass broke above my head. Um, so I turned to run and there was a lady laying down next to me. We initially heard what sounded like maybe fireworks or a car engine failing, um, but then the sounds kept going and they were gunshots. So I looked outside the window um, and I saw two things. I saw a body in the middle of the parking lot that I later realized was, was a dead body because they brought a body bag. I was, I was scared. I mean, it was just, it was the most terrifying event I've ever been through. I mean, I've been through an active shooter drill, but you know, you prepare yourself for that. I mean, this is, this is real life and this is something you never think you'd be involved with, but I mean, it was just, it's, it was just too real and, and too scary. The first thing I want to say is I want to say our hearts of this community go out to the victims of this horrific incident. We know of uh, 10 fatalities uh, at the scene, including one of our Boulder PD officers by the name of Eric Talley. Officer Talley responded to the scene, was the first on the scene, and he was fatally shot. I also want to commend the heroic actions of the officers responding not only from Boulder PD, but from across the county and other parts of this region. Police officers' actions fell nothing short of being heroic. So there it is. That's the King Supers. This is where it happened. And uh, this is my first time here since the, the massacre. And uh, man, it really hits hard. This is my town. My house is 5.9 miles away, and uh, it's hard. It's hard to see this in real life. And I, I you know, I, we all hear about mass shootings in the United States on the news almost every single day, and lots of times they're far away. But this one is is so close. The 10 people who died were my neighbors. I didn't know any of them personally, but they're part of this community and. If you follow my channel, you know, you know how much this town means to me. I'm born and raised here. I've lived all my life here. And uh, this hurts. There's a lot of people hurting in my town right now. Especially the families of all the victims. And I, I can't even imagine that pain. The officer who died, Officer Tally, was a father of seven. And it hits home because one of my brothers is a police officer about an hour away from here, and it could have been him. It just hurts my heart, that's all I can really say. And, you know, I go through waves of sadness, deep sadness, and 
anger. Why does this keep happening in our country? Land of the free, right? But we can't even go grocery shopping now without worrying about getting shot up. It happens too often. It happens way too often. And nothing seems to be done about it. We need something to change. I don't know the answers, but something needs to change. We need to try something. You know, I never owned a gun. I'm scared of guns, but I understand that guns are very important to a lot of people. I have a lot of friends who hunt and they have guns, but assault rifles, guns specifically made to murder humans, I'm not sure we need those here. It feels like this all started with Columbine back in 1999, and I remember that day so clearly. And now here, something equally as horrific happened down the street from my house. And I want it to stop. I don't want to live in a world where I'm scared to do daily activities, but I know that I will continue to live a life of, of love and kindness, and I will do my best always to treat people with respect. If you watch my channel, you know that. And uh, I think we all need to tap into that a little bit more. There's a lot of hurt right now in this country. You've heard the saying, hurt people hurt people. The guy who did this was obviously in a lot of pain and we need to, we need to get to the root cause of the pain in this country so people think, don't think that this is a good option to, you know, solve problems. This will never solve any problems. Violence will never solve anything, ever. I want you all to know that I love and care about you. I really do, all of you. And if you're ever having a hard time, reach out to me for sure. I will talk to you. I absolutely will. And if I can give you a hug, I will give you a hug. But don't ever hesitate to reach out to me. If you'd like to support the families of the victims, my dear friend Jonathan and I started a GoFundMe page, and I will link that down below. Anything you can do will, will definitely be much appreciated. Dana! Ryan. Oh. How you doing, Dana? Uh, you know, it's been rough. I mean, it's... Yesterday, coming to this space, like, you know, we're sitting at the south side now, and right around the corner is where King Supers is. So it's like less than 100 yards. And yesterday, like, coming to this space, it just, like, I'm sure you felt it. Yeah. Today, it's just this... The, this heaviness and um, sadness of just the tragedy, you know. Um, we had two employees here, and uh, when everything when everything started to happen, um, you know, immediately we called over to see if we had staff here. I mean, we're getting ready to open so that the store isn't actually open, but we have staff coming in. And there were two employees here and we told them to either just run, just run and get away, or because no one knew what was happening, or to lock themselves in the office. And that's such a horrible, traumatic thing. And um, they said that people started running down this alleyway and they were, you know, crying and yelling, you know, run, there's a shooter. And I just, it just makes me, just makes me sick to my stomach to think about, you know, what, what was happening. Yeah. And, and then just right here in our beautiful neighborhood, like, I know you're filming, but when you look over your shoulder and you see the beauty, you know, of Boulder, like there's seal, seal rock and just like you know we're we're such a loving tight community we really are those hippie loving peace people and we feel 
safe and secure. I mean, everybody talks about Boulder being a bubble, you know, and it just feels like it just burst. Like it just, I think that's one of the hardest things is that when something like this happens, and I know it's happened all over our country, um, there's like this vulnerability and trauma of safety. Like, remember when the uh, theater shooting happened and then the first time you go into a theater, everybody's like looking over their shoulders and looking around and, and it makes that space not safe. And I've talked to people that are like, you know, afraid to go into the grocery store. I mean, the, you go into the grocery store and it's like, ah, you know, and, and there are police officers right now at the grocery stores. Like if you go to a different King Supers, a friend of mine just said there are two police officers there. And I know it's to make us feel safe, but boy, this has just really rocked us. Um, you, you've always been somebody who's, you've always been somebody who's super positive and you've faced a lot of trauma yourself. Um, how do you personally stay positive in a situation like this? How do you, how do you move forward? Wow, man, you put me on the spot. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, grief is different for everybody and really hard and a part of life. And, you know, I have to say, yesterday I went down the rabbit hole. I mean, the heaviness of it and the sadness, yeah, I just felt numb and then sad and then angry. And the more that we can let ourselves feel, the better. And then I woke up this morning, the sun rose again, and I thought about finding the joy. Like sometimes the joy just finds us, right? Yeah. I mean, we just go out there and ride our bikes and it's everywhere. But today I had to find the joy and search for the joy. and. One of the ways that I do that is gratitude, of course, and I I think about the impermanence of our life and everything that we have today, everything and everyone that we have has not yet been taken because when we die, that's it. Everything is gone, whether we do or, or someone we love. And so it makes me think of everything and everyone that I have today, I need to hold in great holiness of gratitude. Like it just put it on my altar of like, I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for my friends. I'm grateful for the love in my life. I'm grateful for my physical health. Everything that I have today, because we know that, God, man, it can be taken away so fast. So those of us that are that are here to live and live to do the journey and have those experiences like I've been reminding myself all day Ryan that I have to be grateful for what I have and that is really what pulls me out of it it really is I love you Dana I love you Ryan I'm hug. Denny Stong worked at King Supers and was the youngest of the victims he loved motorcycles and model airplanes and was preparing for his first Civil War reenactment. Nevin Stanisic's family came to the U.S. as refugees from the former Yugoslavia in the late 1990s. He was likely headed home from the King Supers on Monday after fix-it jobs inside the grocery store when he was killed in the parking lot. Suzanne Fountain was a financial counselor in the healthcare industry, but she was also known by fans of the local theater who watched her perform. She is survived by a son. Ricky Olds was a front-end manager at King Supers, and her co-workers said her laugh lit up the room. She was supposed to be the maid of honor in her friend's upcoming wedding. Lynn Murray was a retired photo director who previously lived in New York and worked for big name magazines like Glamour, Marie Claire, and Cosmopolitan. 
Terry Liker was a longtime King Supers employee and a huge CU Buffs fan. She was a staple at the Pearl Street Stampede. Jody Waters was a longtime Boulder resident and worked in and owned boutiques on Pearl Street Mall. It sounds like a cliche, but she would light up a room. Kevin Mahoney was 61 and got to walk his daughter down the aisle last summer, but he will not get to meet his unborn granddaughter. Lona Bartkoyak owned Umba Love in Boulder with her sister and the business was home to the 49-year-old's passion for music, creative imports, and overall sense of life and happiness. Eric Talley cashed out of his 401k to change careers in 2010, joining the Boulder Police Department while raising and homeschooling seven children with his wife. He was the first officer to respond to the scene Monday.